Hey y'all and welcome to a Crazy Sock Lady tutorial. This tutorial is how to knit socks on Magic Loop. It will go along with a written pattern that you can find on Ravelry and Etsy and I will have a link for that down below. It is Vanilla Socks on Magic Loop by Crazy Sock Lady Designs. I will keep this intro short and sweet so we can jump right in with learning how to knit our socks on Magic Loop. I want to let you guys know that right down below this video in the down bar, there is a list of supplies that I recommend that you have to do this tutorial, as well as timestamps for the tutorial. So if you're coming and you just need to know how to do your heel on Magic Loop, or you want more help with the toe or the Kitchener stitch, I will have a timestamp right down below for each big portion of the sock that is done. So you can just skip right ahead to that time and see the part that you need to see. This is not a how to knit tutorial, so I do recommend that you know how to do a cast on, you know how to knit and purl and the basics of knitting. This tutorial is just going through how we do those different sections of a sock with the magic loop method of knitting. I will have some links to different tutorials throughout, so if you need help with the cast on, you're not sure how to do the cast on, there will be a link for that. And then for the tutorial, I will be following along with a medium size in the pattern. I will have instructions along the bottom for the different stitch counts throughout the pattern that you might need for different sections for each size, small, medium, and large. But that's it for the intro. So if you need to contact me or you have any questions or need any help with anything, I do have all of my contact information in the down bar below this video. And then you can always comment on the video as well. I do check those regularly. So have fun and enjoy learning how to knit socks on Magic Loop. To get started, we just need our fingering weight sock yarn and our circular needle. I have a 32 inch US 1 2.25 millimeter chow goo circular needle here. 32 inch is what I recommend for doing one sock at a time Magic Loop. And the first thing we're going to do, we're going to be doing a long tail cast on. So we want to make sure that we leave a long enough amount of yarn to do that cast on. So a little trick that I have, and I will insert a clip here of me doing this, is just after years of knitting so many socks, I've figured out that if I hold the yarn right here between my pointer and my thumb, I pull it all the way back to the top of my shoulder, take where the yarn was at the top of my shoulder, Put it back in my left hand, pull it up to the crease where my elbow is. That will leave me enough yarn to do either a small, medium, or a large size long tail cast on. So the first thing that we need to do is create a slip knot. And now we can get our cast on going. We're going to be doing the long tail cast on. If you're not familiar with how to do that, I will put a link for how to do a long tail cast on so that you can head over and check that out. I'm going to be casting on 64 stitches. I'm doing the medium size. You want to cast on the amount of stitches needed for the size that you were doing.
All right, I think this is 64. Let's double check. Yes, that is 64. So we have them cast on on this needle here. Then we have all of this hanging down here just waiting to be used. So what we're going to do is slide all of this to the center of the cable. Now we're going to split these. So since I'm doing the 64 to split that, I'm gonna have 32 stitches on each needle. So I just need to count 32 and then we're gonna split that. So there's 32, I've just got my pointer finger there holding that over on that side. So to split this, I'm just gonna kind of pinch it down and you wanna grab the cable and pull it through so that you've pulled these up towards the needles. Now we wanna make sure we're not twisting these around and we can double check it once everything gets up on the needles as well. So we're gonna push these up onto the needles all the way up towards the end. Now, when I say that we wanna make sure we're not twisting these, you can see that that's the bottom of the stitches. We wanna make sure the bottoms of the stitches where these bumps are stay on the bottom part of the needles. When you look at the tops, you don't wanna see anything like this. That means you've twisted. You want everything to look the same on the top. With Magic Loop, you have half of your stitches on your front needle, your first needle, and then half of your stitches on your back needle, your second needle. So we need to join, at this point, we need to join this in the round. We need to find our working yarn. Make sure, just pull it, you can see it's down on the bottom here. We just wanna pull it over the top and just lay it there on top of that that needle, you can go ahead and grab it if you want and get ready to knit with it. But now what we need to do is pull our back needle out so that we can use it to knit these stitches off of the front needle. So when we do this, we wanna make sure every time, because this is gonna be a continuous thing where we pull our back needle out to knit, use it to knit the stitches off the front needle. We wanna make sure we don't pull this cable completely tied up here. And I'll show you what I mean. So we're gonna go ahead and just pull the needle out. You can see our cable down here. It's getting shorter. We only wanna pull this out far enough that we can get it turned around to knit with it. So you can see if I lay this down here, I've kind of got like an infinity symbol going here. We don't wanna pull this way too far out. You want to leave some of your cable in a loop down here. You just want this pulled out far enough that you can comfortably pull it around and knit with it. So this is our tail yarn hanging down here. We're going to knit into the first stitch on the front needle. And this is going to join it in the round. So for this ribbing, we're just doing knit one, purl one. So we've knit that first stitch, we're gonna purl the second stitch. And we're just gonna do that all the way across. You could do a knit two, purl two ribbing if that's what you prefer.
Okay, so we've reached the end of that first needle. This is what we have here. So we are going to turn our work so that we can work across these back stitches. So you're just gonna take this, turn this so that this is now the back needle. And you pull this needle up. We wanna get them both back onto the needles and set back up. So this is what you will have again. The back needle now is what we just worked. This front needle is what we're going to work now. So here's our working yarn already on the top and ready to go. We need to pull this back needle out and then we're set back up to work across this second needle. And working into that cast on row is always the most difficult, no matter what project you are doing. Everything always seems a little bit more fiddly and harder to do with just the cast on row. So we're just continuing our knit pearl cuff along this back needle. And we're gonna drop that needle and turn our work again. We need to pull this needle back up into here. And there we are set back up to work our second round. You have your tail yarn here. You can give that a little tug after the first round. It'll kind of tighten up any gap that you had there at the beginning. And if you're worried about, maybe you've tried Magic Loop before and you had an issue with ladders at this point and this point. A little trick that you can do is don't worry about pulling that first stitch too tight. That can be the first instinct that someone has when they're having laddering is to want to yank on that first stitch just knit that stitch as normal. After you either knit or purl the second stitch, depending on what you're doing with your project, give that stitch, not a hard yank, just a little extra tug, a little tighter tension on the second stitch on your needle. That will, a lot of the times, even out that tension in the first stitch and help with ladders. So I will show you a couple more times how we begin each round and turn our, our work here to start the next needle. So we're at the end of the first needle. You can see our cuff starting to take shape here. And we are going to turn our work. Then we have this needle down here that we need to pull up. 
into the stitches. Grab our working yarn, take the back needle, pull it out. You wanna make sure you're leaving a little bit of a cable over on this side. And we're gonna continue our cuff. So we finished that needle. I'm gonna turn our work back around. And we are back to the beginning of round. So you can see here, this is the front of our cuff. This will be the front of our sock. That'll be the back. An easy way to tell this is this tail will always mark are beginning of round. Now you can also place a progress keeper into one of your stitches here to help mark the front of your sock if you wish, but it's super easy to just look down at your cuff and know this tail yarn from where you started, that's the beginning of round. So what's right here to the left of the tail yarn is the front of the sock. So in the pattern, I have written that the cuff, you continue to do this for 20 rounds, the knit one, purl one cuff for 20 rounds. You can of course do that a little bit shorter or even a little bit longer if you wish, but go ahead and finish knitting your cuff and then I will meet you back here to show you what it looks like and what you need to do for the leg. Once you have finished your cuff, this is what it will look like. This is 20 rounds of knit one, purl one ribbing. You can see it has a nice stretch there. I did go ahead and knit 15 rounds on the leg so that I could go ahead and show you guys what, that's good, what that is going to look like. For the leg, it is knitting all the way around. This is just a plain vanilla sock, meaning it's all stockinette. And I wanted to show you guys a little trick that I do to count the rounds on my socks. So for this pattern, I have suggested that you do 60 rounds for the leg. Now you can, of course, if you wanna do a shorter sock, you could stop it right here and continue on with the instructions for the heel, but I prefer a longer leg on my sock. So I do 60 rounds and I like to use these little light bulb stitch markers to mark every 10 rounds on my sock. And how I do that is I just count, this was the first round of my leg here. So I just count the V's going up. And then on the 10th one, I slide that marker into the stitch. Another thing that this will do, I said earlier, if you need a marker to mark the front of your sock so that you can keep the front and back separate, Again, you can always use this tail that'll always fall on that right side there. But if you mark your rounds every 10th round on the front of your sock, you're always gonna know that's the front because that's where your markers are telling you how many rounds you've done. And then when you get more done, you can just count them by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. Then you'll know, okay, I've done 60, it's time for the heel flap. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue knitting on the leg of the sock and I will meet you guys back here for the heel. Go ahead and do 59 rounds if that's what you're doing or if you're gonna do 20 rounds, do 19 rounds and then come back for instructions for the heel flap. 
because there's something that you do on that last round to get you set up and ready to go that I want to make sure I show you guys. I have knit 59 rounds on the leg from the end of the cuff down to here and I placed my marker every 10 rounds so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 and then there's nine rounds right here. Super easy way to go back and count instead of having to count everything or keep track on a pen and paper, you know, which is perfectly fine to do, but I found that I would lose track sometimes when I would do that for a whole leg of a sock. So this just makes it super easy to count. All right, so we're gonna do half a round for round 60. I like 60 rounds on the leg of my sock. So for this, we're just gonna work across needle one like we have been, just knitting across. Then we're gonna be set up to start our heel flap on needle two. And we will only be working across needle two for our heel flap. And whatever round you decide will be the last round on your leg, you want to do only half a round for that round so that you are then set up to do the heel flap on the back. All right, so that is round 60. Turn it. And this is where we will begin our heel flap. Our heel flaps worked on needle two on half of our total stitches. So for the size I'm doing, it's worked across these 32 stitches. And we're gonna be working back and forth across this needle. So for the heel flap and the heel turn, we are not working in the round, we're working flat. So for our first row on the heel flap, we're gonna be repeating, it's a two row repeat. So for the first row, we're going to keep our yarn in the back, slip this first stitch purlwise, so we're sticking the needle in that way, yarns in the back, and then we're gonna knit one. Slip one, knit one. Slip one, knit one. This is a slip stitch heel flap, so we're just gonna repeat that all the way across slipping a stitch, knitting a stitch for the whole row. That's row one. Now we're going to turn our work. We're not going to do anything with this up here. This is staying put. We're going to still be working across needle two. We're going to slip this first stitch with the yarn in the front. We're slipping purlwise. And then we're going to purl across this row. That's row two, going to turn your work and you're still just gonna be working across needle two. And we're just gonna repeat 
row one again. So slip one, knit one all the way across and then repeat row two. So just repeat those two rows. And for the size that I'm doing, I'm going to repeat those until I have a total of 32 rows on my heel flap. So I'm going to be repeating them a total of 16 times for 32 rows. And there is a way that you can count as you're going. So you can see here this longer yarn that's been pulled across. That's where we slipped the stitches. So when you see one of those, that counts as two rows. So you can go through once you've done your heel flap and count these, and I'll show you again once the heel flap's done. And that'll be able to count two, four, six, eight, ten, 10, you know, until you get to 16. And then you'll know you've done 32. Or you can also write out the rows, one through 32, cross them off as you're done. That is my preferred way to keep track. So that's what I'll be doing off to the side here. But we're just gonna keep repeating these two rows. So again, row one is slip one, knit one, all the way across. Row two, slip one, purl across. You're gonna repeat those, just follow the instructions for your size. And I'll meet you back here when we are ready to start the heel turn. I've completed my 32 rows for the heel flap. So this is what it will look like. You can see that these raised stitches are our slip stitches. The ones that are kind of down in the background there are our knit stitches. And a slip stitch heel flap, that's, a heel is really the hardest wearing part of your sock. So you want something with a little bit of extra cushion there. So a slip stitch heel flap does a great job. And you can look at the back here and see what I was talking about with how you can see where we held the yarn in the back to slip the stitches. And you can count those to make sure you've done the correct amount of rows. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32. So that tells us that we have done 32 rows. We've repeated it 16 times. You could just count it by ones and make sure that you have 16 of those there. And now we are ready. Sorry for that noise there. Now we are ready to do our heel turn. And to me, when you do a heel turn on a sock, this is when it becomes like magic. And you were just like, whoa, I have just turned that sock. Because right now everything is just coming straight down the leg from the cuff. So we need to do our heel turns so that our work starts working down the foot of the sock. So this is gonna be worked flat as well. In our first row of our heel flap, we are going to slip one with the yarn in the back, purl wise. And for the size that I'm doing, I'm gonna knit 16. And these first two rows we're doing are getting us set up for our heel turn. There's 16. And now we are going to do a slip, slip, knit. We're gonna slip the next stitch knit-wise. Slip the next stitch knit-wise. Put our needle through both of those stitches we just slipped. And then we're gonna knit them through the back loop. Now we're going to knit one. Now we need to turn our work. We didn't work any of these stitches. We're just gonna leave them hanging there for now. So for row two, we're going to slip the first stitch and then purl three. Then we need to purl two together. So we're gonna slip our right needle into the next two stitches. Yarn over, purl them together. Purl one and turn our work. Now row three and four are what we are going to be repeating throughout our heel turn. 
So for row three, we're slipping the first stitch, yarn in the back, slipping purl wise. Now we need to knit across to one stitch before the gap. So if we look at our knitting here, you can see we've got all these stitches over here that haven't been worked yet. These have been worked and there's a bit of a gap in between them. So we wanna to go to one stitch before that gap. One stitch and gap, that's where we wanna be. Now we are going to close up this gap by doing slip, slip, knit, and then knit one. And we're gonna turn our work back to the wrong side. Yarns in the front. We're gonna slip that first stitch purl-wise and we're gonna purl across to the gap. So let's look here. You can see the stitches that haven't been worked. These we've been working on. There's the gap in between them. So to one stitch before the gap is where we want to go to. Here we are, there's one stitch in the gap. So now we're going to purl these two stitches together and then purl one. So these are the two rows that we're gonna be repeating. I'll walk you through them a couple more times, but basically what we are doing, let me get turned around here. These stitches over here have not been worked yet. These stitches over here have not been worked yet. Each row that we do, we're working more of these stitches on the ends that have not been worked. Here is our heel turn starting to take shape. That is the back of it. So we want to do repeat these two rows until all of these stitches have been worked. So we're back on a right side row. We're going to slip with the yarn in the back. Knit across to one stitch before the gap. Stitch and gap. Now we need to close that up by doing a slip, slip, knit, then knit one. Turn our work, slip this first stitch purlwise with the yarn in the front, and then purl across to one stitch before the gap. Then we need to close that up. We're gonna put our needle in through these first two stitches to the front, purl them together, and then purl one. Turn our work. Now, the only thing we're gonna to have to watch out for is when we get to the very last purl round, we are not slipping that first stitch. If you have the written pattern that is noted in there, and one way you can tell that you're coming up onto that first round, these stitches over here on the outsides, the amounts will get smaller each row you do. So you want to, when you get to where there's two stitches and all of these have been worked, two stitches, all of these have been worked, you know you're on those last two right side and wrong side rows. And I'm gonna let you guys go ahead and work these next couple of ones by yourself. And I will meet you back here when we each have only two stitches over here that haven't been worked and two stitches over here that haven't been worked. So we are ready to do the last two rows of our heel turn. You can see we have only two stitches over here that need worked, two stitches over here that need worked. So we're just gonna work this knit one as normal this right side row. We're gonna slip purlwise with the yarn in the back, knit across to one stitch before the gap. Here 
Here's our gap that we're going to close up by slip, slip, knit. Then we're going to knit that last stitch and all of those stitches have been worked. So we're going to turn to the wrong side. And for this one, we've always been just slipping this first stitch. But for this one, we're gonna purl it. And what that is going to do is close up that stitch a little bit better. I found if I slip the first stitch on this last row, after I've picked up all of my gusset stitches, I will notice a little gap in the corner here. So we just purl that first stitch instead of slipping on the last wrong side row. And now we're just gonna work it as we have been. So we're purling all the way across and we are to our gap I guess some more yarn out there we're to our gap so we're going to purl these two stitches together. Purl one. And that is it. We have just done a heel turn. Let's take a look here. So we've got our cuff, the leg of our sock. Let's stick that through there so it doesn't bang on the table. Our heel flap and our heel turn. See, I just feel like still every time I do this, it is like magic. So let's pull our sock out here. So you can see what this looks like. So there we've got everything coming straight down and now we are turning and we're going to work this way. So the next thing that we need to do is pick up our gusset stitches so that we can begin working back in the round and work on the foot of our sock. To start picking up the gusset stitches, that is our next step. So we're going to get everything put back up onto our needles here. And we're gonna work across, we're gonna need a stitch marker to mark our new beginning of round because our beginning of round is going to shift to the center of where our heel turn is for doing our gusset section. So we're gonna go ahead and get our marker placed first. We're gonna work across half of our total stitches here. So I'm gonna work across nine for the size that I am doing. Now place the stitch marker. Knit across the next nine stitches to bring us to the end of our heel turn and ready to pick up half of our gusset stitches. And I'll talk more about why I like to place a marker here. Just a couple of things that I feel that it makes easier when you're decreasing your gusset stitches um, as we get going and get a little further into it. Okay, so this is just gonna hang out our other needle down here. I'm sticking it through there so that it doesn't bang on the table as much. <laughs> but we are gonna pick up our gusset stitches along the half of our heel flap here. This other half we'll get to in just a moment. So right along here, if you turn your heel flap, you can see that we have V's going up the sides of our heel flap. That is where we are going to pick up our gusset stitches. So depending on the size that you're doing, you're going to have a different amount to pick up. For the size I'm doing, I need to pick up 16 stitches. So how I'm going to do that is come down to the first V that I see here. 
insert my needle under both legs of that V, wrap the yarn, and pull it through. That's our first one. So then we wanna come down to the next V. Again, under both legs of the V, wrap the yarn and pull it through. So I'm just gonna keep going down and pick up 16 stitches, whoops. There we go. You can just see you're following these V's all the way down. Now I'm gonna double check and another, this is a tip right here of why I like this so much. It makes it easier to count what you've got going on on one half of your gusset area. So I know I had nine up here. So two, four, six, eight, nine, and then two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15. So I only need one more. There is our 16 gusset stitches picked up. Now a little trick that I like to do, I like to pick up an extra stitch. This helps avoid a gap on this little spot right here where you're connecting to join back in the round. So I like to come down in the ladder right here. You can see this is the ladder between the stitch back here and the stitch on the front needle. So I'm gonna stick that ladder onto my left needle. And then to close that up even more, I could knit it through the front loop, but you can see that leaves a pretty big gap. So I like to come back through the back loop knit that through the back loop and it helps to close it up. Now you can still, I, I'll show you when I finish the sock, I guarantee on one side here, I'm gonna have a tiny little gap that I'm gonna have to close up on the inside. Sometimes it's just, you cannot avoid it, but this really helps diminish that gap that you're gonna have there. And like I said, I'll show you when the sock is done, the gaps, you know, that may happen and how to close those up. Okay, so we have picked up all of the gusset stitches on the one side. Now we just need to knit across needle one. We are back to working on needle one. This is just a plain vanilla sock, but this is where if you were doing a pattern sock, you would just continue on with the pattern on needle one. So needle one is done and we are back to this other side of our gusset where we need to pick up our stitches. So again, I'm gonna pick up that extra stitch in that top ladder right there. I'm just gonna stick my left hand needle into that, pull my right hand needle out. You may have to adjust a bit to pull that cable out. And knit that 
through the back loop. Now I'm going to pick up the gusset stitches along this side of the heel flap. Again, I'm just looking for those V's and I'm gonna pick up 16 of these. And on this side, you can always count ahead because it can get a little confusing when you're looking down here to decide where your first V is. So you can just always count, you know, by twos up the side to see where the first one is that you need to pick up. There we go, I have my extra stitch and then my 16 stitches. So now, this is what you will have. Across needle one, you only have half of your original stitch count. So for the size I'm doing, it's 32 stitches. That has not changed at all. This is going to be our new needle two. Obviously it has changed. There are a lot more stitches now that we've picked up these gusset stitches. And we are going to keep, this is our beginning of round for now for our gusset decreases. But we're still having it set up as needle one and needle two. So we need to knit across to the beginning of round. And then we're going to do our first gusset decrease. Slip our marker and here we go. We are ready to knit across and do our first gusset decrease. Our decrease is gonna be done right here and right here. So at the two points where our needles join, they'll happen on needle two only, no decreasing on the front needle. So we are going to knit across to three stitches before the instep begins and the instep is the front of our sock. We're gonna be decreasing every other round for our gusset until we are back down to our original stitch count on needle two. So for me, that'll be until I'm back down to 32 stitches. All right, we're down to the last three stitches here. And we are going to knit these two stitches together, just putting our needle through both of them at the same time knitwise. Knit them together and then knit one. Turn our work. And we're going to knit across needle one.
turn our work and we're back to needle two and ready to do our second gusset decrease. So for this one, we are going to knit that first stitch and then we're gonna do a slip slip knit just like we did in our heel turn. I think I split a stitch here, there we go. And then we're gonna knit across to our marker. That is our first round of the gusset completed. So the next round, we're gonna slip our marker. The next round is just a plain knit round. So go ahead and knit all the way around and I'll meet you back at the beginning of round marker to do our next round of decreases. I've completed round two, which was just a plain knit round. Now I'm gonna show you the decrease round one more time. So we're gonna knit across to three stitches before the end of needle two here, before our end step begins. And we're going to knit the next two stitches together. Knit one. Turn our work and knit across needle one. While we're here on needle one, let me go ahead and show you another trick that I do. So I have marked every 10 rounds and I will continue to do that on the foot. And then I know how many rounds I did for the foot. And then when I knit the second sock, I could just make it as many rounds as I did this one and it will match. I like to mark the 60th round or if I'm doing a sock with a 30 round leg, the 30th round with a different marker, whether it's a pretty little progress keeper or something like this. And mark it with a different one so that I know that was the heel flap round, that's the end of my leg. So I'm just gonna stick that in there. Double check, yep. So there we go, I've got my 60 rounds for the leg and now everything on this after, I will count as the foot. So just use a different marker to mark your heel flap and then you know how many rounds you're doing for the foot. Okay, so go ahead and knit across to the end of needle one. We are ready to do our next decrease. So we are going to knit one, slip, slip, knit, and knit across to the beginning of round marker. So our next round will be a plain knit round. And these are the two rounds that you're repeating for the gusset. The decrease round and then a plain knit round. Decrease round, plain knit round. And you will continue repeating those two rounds until you reach 
your original stitch count. I'm gonna take this marker out here and show you guys what we are working towards here. So here's our heel flap and our heel turn. We've joined back in the round and we're creating this area of the sock right here. In this area, you wanna have a little extra room and that's why we picked up all of those extra gusset stitches because it just allows us to have that extra room in the widest part of our foot area. So we need to decrease that back down because typically you have your widest part here and then it narrows back down. So we're just decreasing every other round until we're back to our original stitch count. And like I said, I have a couple of reasons why I prefer to have a marker here and have this as my beginning of round. And the main reason for me is that I feel it makes it easier when you're counting your stitches, getting back to your original stitch count because you don't have to count every stitch on here it's automatically just split in half with that marker there. So for the size I'm doing, I know I need to have 16 stitches here and 16 stitches here. And that's gonna give me my 32. So instead of having to count to see if there are 32 stitches on needle two, I just have to split it where that marker is, 16 and 16. So I just think it makes it a little bit easier. So I will meet you guys back here when we are back to our original stitch count. You're just repeating the decrease round and then a plain knit round until you are back to the amount of stitches that you need on needle two for the size that you're doing. I am back down to 32 stitches, so 16 stitches and 16 stitches. So I took my marker out. I really think that just makes it so much easier to break it down and count it instead of having to count 32 across the needle. So now our beginning of round, some patterns and some of my patterns even, will have you leave that beginning of round here, that marker there, until you're done with your toe decreases. For this one, I just went ahead and had us remove the marker and we are going to knit across to the end of the round here, or the end of the needle, excuse me, to move our beginning of round back to its original place. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna lay the sock out here to show you what we have so far. And then we're gonna chat about measuring the foot of your sock. So here's where we are at for our sock. We have worked down the leg, and then this is our gusset section where we allowed for that extra room. You can see that this part of the sock is wider, and that's allowing us extra room for our ankle area. So we're now back down to our original stitch count, and we're ready to work along on the foot. This is just gonna be like we did the leg. We're just knitting all the way around. If you are doing a pattern sock at that point, you just wanna keep the pattern on the top of the sock. And I'm gonna show you how to measure the foot of your sock. Now, depending on the size that you are doing, you're gonna to measure to a, a different point with each size. So the size that I'm doing, I'm going to knit the foot until the foot length is 1.75 inches away from the total foot length that I need. So the way that I would measure that is from the back of the heel flap, just line that up, and then you're gonna measure right up to where your stitches are on your needles. So right here, I've only done just a smidge under three and a half inches. So I obviously have a bit more to go, but this is just how you would line it up to measure. So just from lay it flat and then from the back of your heel flap, you're gonna measure up and you wanna go, like I said, it depends on the size that you're doing, but I want to keep going. I want to know my total foot length to begin with. And then I wanna go all the way up to 1.75 inches away from the end 
of that total foot length. Now you can measure your foot to find your total foot length. You can go by shoe sizes. And if you Google shoe sizes in inches, it's gonna pull up the inches for each shoe size. And you can go by that length. That's what I do a lot of the time if I'm knitting for somebody else that I cannot measure their foot or have them try it on as I'm going. So I will put a link down below for you guys for um, just, it's usually a chart that you'll find if you Google shoe sizes and inches. I will do that and put a link for one down below if you wanna check that out. But like I said, you can measure your foot, you can go by the shoe size, whichever way you prefer. And it can always be a bit of trial and error to find the perfect size for you, the perfect foot length that you need to go to, rounds that you need to do. It's a bit of trial and error with getting a, your perfect sock formula for what fits you the best. But just continue on knitting your foot until you reach that point. The pattern does give you for each size where you need to go to. And we will meet back here when we are ready to continue on with the toe. And we will do our toe decreases and then Kitchener up our toe. And then I'll show you how to finish off your sock. We're now ready to knit the toe of our sock. See, we've come down from the heel flap and turn all the way down to here. I've measured and I am ready to go. So I continue to do the markers all the way down the foot. So now when I go to do my second sock, I don't really need to measure the foot. I don't need to worry about that. I can just do how many rounds I have done on the first sock and it should match. So I'll do the same on my leg. I know I did 60 rounds on the leg, so I can do that on the second sock and I'll place markers on the second sock as well, just to make counting them easier on that. But now it's just easy to know exactly how many I did and I can do that second sock to match exactly. So for our toe, we are going to be doing a two round repeat. The first round will be decreases and the second round will be plain knit. So we're only decreasing every other round on this one. So we're going to knit the first stitch. These two stitches we're going to decrease. So we're going to do slip, slip, knit. Now we're going to knit across needle one to the last three stitches. Now we're to the last three stitches. We're gonna knit the next two stitches together and then knit one. And we're gonna turn so that we're on needle two. We're gonna knit one, slip, slip, knit. Knit across to the last three stitches. Then we're gonna knit two together and knit one. So that is our decrease round. This next round will be a plain knit round and then we are gonna repeat the decrease round again. So we're just gonna keep repeating the decrease round, plain knit round, decrease round, plain knit round, until for the size that I'm doing, the medium size, until there are 16 stitches on each needle. So 32 stitches total. And I will meet you guys back here when we reach that point. 
I've decreased down until there are 16 stitches on the front needle and 16 stitches on the back needle. Again, this is for the medium size. And that it was decreasing every other round until I got to that point. Now we're going to be decreasing the same decrease round that we've been doing for the toe, but every round. And we are going to do that until there are eight stitches on the front needle and eight stitches on the back needle. And this is for all sizes. You're gonna decrease down to 16 stitches total, eight front, eight back. So go ahead and keep working that decrease round until you get to that point. And then we will come back here to Kitchener up our toe. We are almost done. I've decreased down and there's eight stitches on the front needle and eight stitches on the back needle. So we have officially completed the knitting on our sock. Now we need to close up this toe with what's called a Kitchener stitch. So I'm going to just cut a tail here. You wanna leave a decent amount. I'd rather have too much left than too little. Then grab a tapestry needle Thread that and we are ready to get started. So we're gonna push our knitting up to the edges of our needles here. And we're gonna take our tapestry needle. We're gonna be working into this first stitch on the front needle first. And we're gonna do that knitwise. So we're just gonna slide the needle through knitwise, pull the yarn through, and then we're going to take that stitch off of the front needle. Then we're gonna work into this second stitch on the first needle, purlwise. Now we're gonna to go to the back needle. We're gonna work through this stitch, purlwise. And we're gonna take it off. Then we're gonna go into the second stitch on the back needle, knitwise, leave it on. And after you finish that, you can give it a little bit of a tug. Don't pull it too, too tight, but you wanna close up any gaps that may remain right there. Now we're gonna repeat those four steps again. So into this first stitch, knitwise, take it off, purlwise, leave it on. To the back needle, we're going to do purlwise, take it off, knitwise, leave it on. And then at that point, close up that gap by just pulling a little bit. Back to the front. I went through both there. There we go. Knitwise. Take it off, purlwise, leave it on. To the back needle, purlwise, take it off, knitwise, leave it on. Then back to the front needle, knitwise, off. Purl on, purl off, knit on.
We're down to our last four here, and we're just gonna do them the same way. So front needle, knit off, purl on, back needle, purl off, knit on. So we're left with two stitches, one on the front, one on the back, and you're just gonna take your needles out. Set those over to the side, because we are done with them for this sock. So now we need to close this area up right here on the corner. And the way we're gonna do that is, you can just put your hand right up inside of the sock. I like to stick the tip of my finger right here where this gap is. And I can see that the yarn came from the back there. So that is my working yarn right there. Just gonna follow it down and around. And if I stick my needle right in here, pull it all to the inside. And you can see there, it closed it right up. So you can give that a little tug on the inside if you want. And you have no gaps on the corners. Sometimes when you do a Kitchener, they're, they have little extra things for you to do at the beginning and the end. That can leave dog ears on the edges, but with this, you don't have any of that. So now I'm just gonna show you how to finish up on the inside of your sock. You've got this end here. You just need to weave that end in, just with whatever way that you prefer to weave your ends in. I just like to run them through the back sides of the stitches a couple of times up and down. And that just weaves them in. It's on the inside of the sock. Nobody's going to see them. Finishes it right up. Then we're going to cut that. I'm gonna leave the yarn on the needle right now because I have a decent amount left. And I'm gonna show you guys, when we did the heel, I talked about how I normally will have a gap on one side. So let's take a look. Let's look at this side first. So this side, no gap. Come to the other side, I have a gap. I always do. It's not normally as bad as this one, but there's always a gap on one side. So an easy fix for that, I always hear people so concerned because they still get a gap on one side and it just happens. Most people that I talk to the knit socks, they get a gap. So I come in with this tail that was left from my toe and I'm just gonna, I'm going in through the back sides of these stitches so that it doesn't show on the front. And I'm doing that just by splitting these stitches. And right here, I'm just securing my yarn. And then we're going to close up that gap. All right, yarn is secured. So then we've got our gap here. I just like to kind of come around going in through the back sides of stitches only. And you just, you're just trying to close this up. So just kind of weave back and forth here. And then once you feel that the gap is closed up, you just want to secure your end by weaving it in. And we can cut that. We can take this yarn off now. We only have one final end to weave in, and this is where our cup is. So go ahead and thread your needle. 
then I like to come, you can see the yarn is coming from over here. I like to come over to this side to close up that gap right there, just like that. And then weave in on the back sides of these stitches in the purl ridges of the cuff. Just up and down a couple of times. Again, if you're making sure you're splitting these stitches and going in through the backs, it will not be noticeable on the front side. All right, so our ends are woven in. Now let's take a look at the gap that we closed up. So there's the side where we had no gap. And over here is where we had a gap. And it is closed up now. You cannot see a gap there. So here's our completed sock. And if you did the markers this way, you can now cast on your second sock and you will know how many rounds to do for the leg and how many rounds to do for the foot. I find that it just really makes that second sock go a little faster. You're not stopping to measure all the time. You just have to count your rounds, place a marker every 10 rounds, and it just seems to fly by. So I hope that you guys found this tutorial for how to knit socks on Magic Loop helpful.